Bueno, bueno. Good evening, teacher. Hello, good evening. Welcome to the class. We Thank are you. going to we are going to wait a few minutes for the rest of the good class. Evening, good evening. Teacher, ¿por qué no podemos ocupar la el, el la password y no que vamos a estar ocupando este link? Eh, fíjese que no sé cómo lo han seteado ellos en Zoom. Eh, lo bueno es que tenemos el link y solo, solo se meten y ya, ¿verdad? Pero eh, uh -huh. quizás se equivocaron en el momento de setear. Falta vuelve. Ah, bueno. Mientras tanto, disfruto con mi alona. Enjoy. Hey everybody, welcome to the class. It's a pleasure to be with you tonight. So we are going to start, of course. 
So um, um, first thing that we're going to check is about the platform. This is already the class of yesterday. So you can watch the class if you want. And this is the homework for yesterday. This is the class of tonight. And tonight you have to do this exercise that is uh, for you just to check what will be the correct option and then send it and that will be it. Okay. Uh, do you have any question about the platform? Okay. So let's check the attendance. Let's see how we go. Aida Isabel Lopez Bonilla. Ana Verónica Hernández Rodríguez. Gracias. Good. Blanca Isabel Tunaca de Rodríguez. Eric Enrique Reyes Martínez. Here, coach. Good. Ernesto José Andrade Medina. Ingrid Paola Hernández Tenorio. Here, teacher. Good. Jennifer Esmeralda Amaya Arias. Present. Good. Jonathan Ariel Figueroa Rivera. José Alfredo Hueso López. Present, teacher. Juan Roberto Velázquez Romero. Here, teacher. Good. Carla Alejandra Castillo. María Julia Ramos Olivar. Present. Good. Mónica Wendy Ábalos Girón. Present. Good. Oscar Mauricio Rivera González. Present. Good. Oscar René Molina Calidonio. Present. Good. Oseas Figueroa Cisneros. Present teacher. Good. Ramiro Rafael Aguilar Díaz. Perdón, present teacher, excuse me. Good. Roberto Carlos Avilés Rivera. Sandra Yanira Gómez Romero. Present teacher. Good. Víctor Eduardo Reyes Navarrete. Present. Good. Víctor Eduardo Reyes Navarrete. Oh, no, I'm sorry, it's the same, right? <laughs> that is it. Very good. I guess it's missing Ernesto, Ernesto Andrade. Let's see what else. Hi, teacher. Here. Very good. Uh, Silvia Patricia. Okay. Got you. And Aida Isabel is coming. Also, Jonathan. Okay. Very good. So, we are going to continue with the class. So... Let me just check here very quickly. Okay, we're going to finish yesterday's topic. And then we're going to continue with today's topic. So, yesterday we were checking some vocabulary. I sent you already the vocabulary there. I sent you these already as well. Uh, and uh, remember that this is something that uh, is going to give you, it's going to give everybody a new vocabulary, check on pronunciation, things like that one. So there are only three more, and then we're going to continue with the rest of the class. So the first one says promotional plan. Who wants to read promotional plan? I want to try, teacher. Of course, go ahead, please. Okay, promotional plan, a framework for the promotional activities of a business. Very good. So that is a promotional plan. So it's a framework. Uh, what is a framework, my friends? Framework.
Okay, a framework is like, like a plan, like a picture with diagrams that is telling you what to do, right? So that would be a framework for the promotional activities of a business. So it's like a plan for promotion, right? It's like uh, you have a product or a product mix that yesterday we were checking about product mix, and then uh, you want to promote this one. That would be it. Promotional policy, who wants to read promotional policy? Okay. Okay. Of course. Uh, I think the affecting the team of the special activities, just a content and presets. That's business used to attract customer and do in crisis cell. Okay, very good. A promotional policy, a guideline affecting the kinds of special activities such as contests and prizes that businesses use to attract customers and to increase sales. Okay, for first of all, what is a policy? Do you remember what a policy is? Political. Political. Very good. Speaking about companies, rules or, or things like that, right? And actually, they said a guideline. Guideline is like a a synonym of policy. So a guideline is like a, a guide, a step by step uh, manual, affecting the kinds of special activities, meaning that it's going to affect certain products, such as contests and prices. Okay, so the promotional policy is like when you say, if you buy one, you have the other one for free. Or if you want the color blue and the color red, you are going to get one black. Something like that. Right? So it's like a prize, a contest, or anything for you to get something from the product. And it's, of course, for the companies to attract customers and to increase sales. So that is, of course, the main objective. Okay. And the other one is with. Anybody wants to read with? Okay, meet the check. Okay, go ahead. With a product mix dimension referring to the number of product lines carried by a company. Very good. So a width is a product mix dimension referring to the number of product lines carried by a company. So the width is like the number of products. That is it. The number of products that a company have. Sometimes remember that these are separated by lines or any other thing. But at the end, uh, it's going to be the same with. Okay. Do you have any question here in this slide? I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, Guideline in Spanish. Okay, guideline significa como un sinónimo de políticas o de reglas. Guideline es guía. Ah, okay, okay. okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, teacher. Very good. Any other question? Okay, no, teacher. Very good. Perfect. So now, yes, we're going to start the product life cycle presentation. That is the class number two. So uh, we're going to go to another topic. Uh, we don't have that many slides here, but it's a very good idea for us to understand. So who wants to be uh, the one who read this one? Me, teacher. OK. Mm. Understanding product classification like this can help you better market, price, and distribute your product. All the information, the next part as well, no? Yes, please. Okay. There are four types of product uh, classification and a variety of reasons why these classification are important. Let's dive into each type. So you can de decide where your product falls and learn 
the top marketing strategies for each. Perfect, very good, thank you. So understanding product classifications like this can help you better market price and distribute your products. There are four types of product classification and a variety of reasons why these classifications are important. Let's dive into each type so you can decide where your product falls and learn the top marketing strategies for each. So in this uh, part, what we're going to check is we're going to see the product classifications. So depending on certain things, we have different kinds of products, okay? That's what we're going to check. Let's see some words. Um, let's see. Uh, remember pronunciation is variety, a variety of reasons. And uh, diet, what is diet? Anybody knows? Uh, profundidad, no. no. Mm, very similar, something like that one. So dive. Is, very good, that is. Dive is when you, for example, when you go to the ocean and you go under the water, dive. So in this case, it says, let's dive into each type. So let's research, let's learn, right? And I don't see any other. Do you have any question here? Okay, if you have questions about pronunciation, also you can ask, okay? Pronunciation or meaning, any question that you may have. Okay, so who wants to read this one? Product classification organizes product into four, four categories based mostly on cost, customer buying behavior, similarity to competing brands and price range. Classifying products help marketing and sales team develop strategies to target customer needs. Product classification are not the same as product categories, but can help to organize product for promotion. But product categories are usually specific to a business, industry, or niche. Niche. Very good. Perfect. So it says product classification organizes products into four categories based mostly on consumer buying behavior. Okay, the first part uh, is telling you about how is the categorization of this one, how you classify, right? It's based on consumer buying behavior. So that is how we categorize this. And then it says similarity to competing brands in price range. So are products that are similar from different companies different brands, okay? Classifying products help marketing and sales teams develop strategies to target consumer needs. Definitely, okay? So here I have a few questions. What is um, behavior? Comportamiento. Very good, that is it. Uh, the other one is develop. Eh, desarrollo. Desarrollo. Very good. Desarrollo. Mm. Nice. Target. Objetivo. Something like that. Very good. Perfect. And then on the other part, says product classifications are not the same as product categories. Both can help to organize product for promotion. But product categories are usually specific to a business industry or niche. Okay, so uh, both. What is both? Ambos. No. Very good. That is it. And what is niche? Nicho or lugar específico? Something like that one. Okay. Yes. Or como el objetivo? Uh, something like that as well, yeah. It's like 
when you have a product, you decide if this is going to be for teenagers or for people that speak English or things like that. So that is a niche. This so the, uh, the people objective? Uh, something like that. Very good. The objective, the market objective. So something like that. Uh, and so on the last part of what it says is that we can have classification or categories. But categories is inside of an industry or a company. And uh, the classification in general is based on the consumer buying behavior. So that is the main objective. Do you have any questions here? For me, no teacher, it's clear. Very good. So let's check about classification and why it's important that one. Who wants to read this one? Me, hey, teacher. Okay, go ahead. Understanding product classification is, is viral when... Viral. Viral when the devising a uh, marketing strategy why well it lets you know the the means mindset most, mindset most consumer have and the behavior they 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 display when in interacting with your product please continue this knowledge help to create to create, create, create. effective customer-centric marketing strategy. It also help you decide on a realistic marketing budget. 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 Okay, very good, perfect. So uh, it says understanding product classification is vital when devising a marketing strategy. So uh, what is viral? Vital. Exactly as in Spanish, right? Very good, viral. So why? Vital, vital is vital. similar, a synonym, uh, import, important. Teacher. Very important, yeah. Something basic, right? Very good. So why? Well, it lets you know the mindset most consumers have and the behavior they display when interacting with your product. So mindset, what is mindset? Teacher, it's a similar uh, behavior. This kind of uh, behavior, yeah. So there are different mindsets that people have around the world. For example, one of the mindset that is a very common is that people believe that here in Latin America, we're very, very poor, right? Yes, we are poor, but we are not very, very poor. Or not everybody is very, very poor, right? There are buildings and there are things like, it's not the jungle, right? People sometimes in other countries, they believe here it's just like countryside, just trees and things like that. So that is a mindset. Uh, when you believe or when you uh Think about something in a specific way, right? Okay. Teacher, mm -hmm. es como más como una creencia o como un estigma? No, none of those. It's like a belief. Yeah, como creencia quizás va más más cercado. So, because a mindset can be a, a positive thing or it can be a negative. Okay. So when you have, for example, when you go to your job. When you get a job, you are new and you go for the first day to your job, you have a mindset that you are going to have to do many things, that you will have a lunch time, that you will have to, I don't know, learn many things, ask questions. So that is a mindset, for example. Then it says this knowledge helps you create effective customer centric marketing strategies. It also helps you decide on a realistic marketing budget. Oh, that is a very interesting part. So, knowledge, what is knowledge? Conocimiento. Very good. And what is, it says, customer-centric marketing strategies. What do you understand of that? It's 
when uh, we have a, a choice uh, only one type uh, the customer mm, something like that yeah it might be this is a very important thing uh, i don't know if you have seen that one but sometimes well i, I remember when i was a kid uh, people believe that you put the words uh, in disorder and that is English, but it's not like that one. In English, the words sometimes are adjectives, are describing other words. And that happens here. So if we translate into Spanish, customer-centric marketing strategies, si lo traducimos al español esa parte, va como al revés. No, es que en el inglés al revés. Ahí sería estrategias de mercadeo centradas en in el clean. So it's the opposite. But, uh, quizá la explicación acá es bien interesante, es bien importante porque la palabra estrategia está describiendo a marketing. Por eso va después. Y marketing está describiendo a centric. Por eso va después. Y centric está describiendo a customer. Entonces, como están en función de un adjetivo, van después de la palabra que están describiendo. Por eso a veces se lee al revés, porque estrategias de qué? De marketing. De mercadeo de qué? Centrado. Centrado en quién? En el consumidor, en el customer. Uh, so it's describing something. That's why some names are the opposite in Spanish. Very good. Do you have any questions about that? Okay, uh, who wants to read the other paragraph? I try. Thank you. Es eh, el número tres, ¿verdad? Yes, please. For instance, say your products fall under the insult. Good, good. Classification, this means that you will likely need to take a more aggressive marketing approach to it to reach customers that may not have consider considered your product or brand. Very good, perfect. Thank you, Oscar. So it says, for instance, so that is for example, uh, say your product falls under the unsound goods classification. Okay, what is unsound goods? Anybody knows? No. Okay, unsound goods son bienes no buscados. So uh, products that you don't need very much, something like that. Okay, and uh, after that one says, this means that you'll likely need to take a more aggressive marketing approach. What is approach? Anybody knows? Acercamiento. Like acercamiento. Very good. So, to reach consumers that may not have considered your product or brand. So, the meaning of this paragraph is that there are products that are very basic, that you really need this product, like food, for example, or like health or security, okay? But there are other products that are not uh, like the most basic. Like, for example, what can I say? Sunglasses or what else? It can be a very expensive toy, okay? A video game. So, when you have this product, that they are called unsound goods. Products that are not first necessity. Okay? So when you have a product that is not first necessity, then you need to have a more aggressive marketing plan. Because since this is something that is not very basic, uh, well, you need to reach them, right? 
you need to reach them and uh, you need to convince customers to buy the product. So that is it. So depending on the product that you have, then you are going to decide your strategies for the future. That's why it's very important to know the classification of products. Good, good. Uh, let's see, I don't see any other word here. Do you have any question here in this slide? For me, not John. Good, good. Let's move on then. Okay, who wants to read this slide? Me, teacher. Okay, go ahead. Think of uh, charities, okay, the pronunciation? Yeah, charity. Yeah. Organization, uh, life insurance companies, and funeral homes. Uh, these are usually not top of mind for customers. As, as such, this brand must put in more effort to be visible. Visible. Okay, visible to consumers and highlight the benefit of their goods of service. The second one? Yes, yes. please. Yeah. Okay. Shopping goods, on the other hand, are highly visible and competitive customers typically spend time comparing quality, cost, and value before making a purchase. That's why building brand loyalty is vital for this product Michael. classification. Very good, perfect. So let's analyze. Think of charity organizations. It says, what is charity? Caridad. Very good. So think about charity organizations, life insurance company. What is life insurance? Seguro de vida. Very good. And funeral homes. So these companies, uh, for them to, to attract customers is harder, it's more difficult. Uh, because, I mean, I believe that nobody is looking for life insurance. So you think about an inconvenience, but uh, you prefer to buy a car, you prefer to buy a, I don't know, something that you need or food, right? But sometimes it's necessary. Uh, so, but the customers, they are not looking for this one very much. So these are usually not top of mind for consumers. Says. What is top of mind? Anybody knows? En el, la, en lo más alto, en, pensando en lo más, en lo principal. Exactly that. One. It's not very important. It's important, but it's not the most important. So as such, these brands must put in more effort to be visible to consumers and highlight the benefits of their goods or services. What is highlight? Destacar. Very good, that is so. And the other hand says shopping goods, on the other hand, are highly visible and compared. Consumers typically spend time comparing quality, cost, and value before making a purchase. That's why building brand loyalty is vital for this product classification. Interesting. This part is very interesting. Because yes, uh, shopping goods like food, like medicine, like gasoline, I don't know, uh, are very important. And we take the time to research, to compare, to analyze what is the best that we can buy, right? So in this kind of products, the companies, they put a lot of effort in the building brand loyalty. Do you know what is building brand loyalty? Construir lealtad a la marca. Exactly. So I believe that a lot of people, we have something like that, one, right? We believe that that is the best brand. For example, something very common is Coca-Cola, right? A lot of people, they say, ah, that is the best. I mean, you can have a Fanta, or you can have a, 
another one, but a lot of people, they believe that Coca-Cola is the best. But that is just because of this, because of brand loyalty. People, they get, uh, they get related to the brand. So that happens in many aspects, with cars, with uh, anything. If the companies, they have brand loyalty, the customers, they are going to continue buying that maybe forever. Right? So it's an interesting thing. Good. Do you have any question here? Okay. It's clear. Nice. Uh, regarding this one, uh, there is something that I was reading in a documentary a few years before. I don't know if you have seen that one. It's in YouTube. Um, I don't send to you because it's in Spanish, but you, if you can look for that one. It's called Programmed Obsolescence. Do you know what is that? Programmed Obsolescence. Programa obsoletos? Mm, no programa, but obsolescence. Programada. Exactly, that's the one. Very good. And in the, okay, it's very interesting, you know, in the documentary, they start with a, with a printer. And the printer doesn't print anymore. But the man is saying, I don't know what's wrong with the printer. I mean, Everything was fine yesterday. And he starts researching and he finds that inside of the printer, mm -hmm. there is a chip. And this chip counts every printing that the printer does. And when they reach a certain amount, the printer stops. So the printer is good, it's in good condition, but it's designed that way. And he started researching that in the United States and in Europe, in the university, they teach to the designers, to the engineers, to create products that don't last forever. Products that last only five years, six years, 10 years maybe, depending on what you're doing. So the consumers buy more products. Uh, also, I was checking that, uh, for example, the light bulb or the Gillette, you know, the Gillette for you to shave your your face. In the past, the Gillettes, they, they can last forever. I mean, they can create something that is going to be with you forever. But that is not a business. So they created something that you can use three times and then you have to buy more and more. That is a programmed obsolescence. So it's designed, the products are designed just for a few years. In my end, what do you think about that? I think that teacher, uh, uh, currently the product uh, is a similar uh, create, create uh, the need. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy, right? All the world is, is like that. So you buy a computer. I mean, in the past, the computers, they last a lot. Uh, maybe not the computers because you need something very new for running things, but cars, for example. I remember that a long time ago, cars never get on fire. But now you can see on the news that sometimes cars get on fires. Something's going on. Right, it's it's not the same. Products are not the same. Good. Let's continue then. That was just something else that I want to check with you. Who wants to read this one? Okay, I wanna try. Coach. Of course, go ahead. Okay, one, convenience goods are products that customers buy rep repeatedly 
without much thought. Once customers choose their brand of choice, they are typically stick to it to it unless they see a reason to switch. For example, an interesting advertisement. Advertisement. Advertisement, thank you. Or convenient placement at the checkout aisle may inspire them to try a new brand. Example of convenience could include gum, uh, toilet, toilet paper, mm -hmm. soap, toothpaste, shampoo, and milk. Very good, perfect. This is an interesting one. This is the first category. Okay, remember that we discussed that there are four. So this is the first one, convenience goods. That is the name of the first category. So convenience goods are products that consumers buy repeatedly without much thought. Once consumers choose their brand of choice, they typically stick to it unless they see a reason to switch. For example, an interesting advertisement or convenient placement at the checkout aisle may inspire them to try a new brand. So it's very interesting what it says here. Convenience goods are products that people buy repeatedly. Every, every time that you go to the supermarket, you buy soap or you buy toothpaste or you buy sugar or eggs. And if you analyze, you almost always buy the same brand. You look for the same brand. You go and are looking, where is my, my mayonnaise, right? I don't know. So you are looking for that specific one, okay? Only if you can find your product, only then you analyze, okay? What are the other options? <coughs> Bless you. What are uh, the brands or the pricing in you compare? But almost always, when you identify the brand or the product that you want, you always buy the same, right? So for example, in toothpaste is very popular Colgate, right? That is one of the most popular. Okay, let's check some other things. Uh, here it says, it says without much thought, what is thought on the second line? Es como re reflexionar. Yeah. Thinking. Pensamientos, no. Very good. That is it, pensamiento. So, thought is the past of think. Okay. Ah, okay. Pensar. Exactly. So, uh, once. What is once? Una vez. Very good. Once consumers choose the brand of choice, they typically stick to it. What is stick to it? The, una, the un tipo, rama. Mm -hmm. Okay, stick is like rama, but not in this case. In this case, when you say stick to it, es algo así como cuando dicen, yo me quedo con esta marca. Se quedan con, se queda pegado. So, when you decide what is the brand that you is, uh, choose, I mean, you stick to it. Unless, what is unless? Eh, al menos. Very good. Unless they see a reason to switch. Yeah, it might be that on the news you see that the, the product has a problem or is dangerous. Then you say, mm, maybe I have to change, right? Uh, and then it says, for example, an interesting advertisement. What is advertisement? Anuncio. Very good. Anuncio. Nice. Uh, or convenient placement at the checkout aisle. Uh, the pronunciation of that word is aisle. Noise. We do not pronunciate yes. So it's aisle. Do you know what is aisle? Aisle. No. Okay. An aisle is pasillo. 
como en el supermercado. El pasillo del super. That is an aisle. Okay. And it says examples of convenient goods include gum. What is gum? Goma. La goma de vaca. Very good. That is it. Uh, toilet paper. Papel higiénico. Cota. Papel toalla. Sock. What is sock? Jabón. Very good. Toothpaste. Jabón. What is toothpaste? Pasta de dientes. Very good. You know, shampoo is shampoo. Okay. And milk, of course, you know, what is that? Okay, so, I mean, that happens. You buy the same the same brand. For example, in toilet paper, what is the brand that you always buy? Scott. Scott, yeah, Scott. that is the most popular. Scott is, and it's not the cheaper one. If you compare in the supermarket, it's not the cheaper, but it's the most popular. A lot mm -hmm. of people, they go and look for Scott. Right. Uh, what What about sub? What is the sub that you always look for in the supermarket that you always buy? Palm olive. Palm olives, yeah. So that is very, very popular, very common. Protex. So Protex, yeah. Protex, yes. Okay. Before the COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very yeah, popular. that was very popular. What about toothpaste? What is the toothpaste that you always buy? Colgate. Colgate. Exactly right. Colgate. Let me know why. Yeah. Yeah, Colgate. I mean, if you go to the supermarket, you will see that in, in that part of the toothpaste, 80% of the toothpaste is Colgate. <laughs> Only a few are other brands. But it's because of that when people... I mean, they look for that one. And I mean, you don't need to see a, a, a commercial, but you don't see uh, an advertisement. You are, you are, that is your brand, right? What about shampoo? In shampoo, it might be different. So. Different brands, teacher? Yeah. Different brands. Yeah. So. Head and shoulder. Head and shoulder is very popular. So yeah, that's true. What other well, shampoo? Upon. Well, upon this, well, upon is a very good brand, yeah. But for me, teacher, <laughs> that's good for you. Well, eh? well, go ahead, or shampoo, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a good one. <laughs> okay, uh, what about milk? What is the best milk brand? Australia, Australia, dos pinos. Dos pinos, okay, very good, perfect. Nido, and, nido. Okay, that is very popular. That is true. That is true. Salud, salud. Very ah, good. Ancho. Nice, ancho. Jennifer. <laughs> Anchor, yeah. Anchor. Tell me, Jennifer. Uh, she raised the hand, but. I if she wants to speak. We cannot hear you. Okay. So there are many other products in this category. Can you see? Convenience goods are like that. So for example, uh, beans, I don't know, every everything of food, sodas, uh, Eggs, everything. Rides. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, everything is into that one. And almost always, we go and we look for our brand. We don't go and look for a new brand, right? So it's interesting because we are part of the system. <laughs> Do you have any questions here? Yes, teacher. Uh, I don't remember uh, advertisement. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you mean? Uh, perdón, uh, what do you uh, ¿Qué significa advertisement? Yeah, advertisement is uh, como hacer comerciales, un comercial, producción, promocionar, something like that. There is a word for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Very good. Any other question? For me, it's clear, teacher. 
Perfect. Let's move on then. Okay. Uh, who wants to read the next one? Marketing convenience goods to promote a uh, convenience good. Remember that most people impulse by this product. Placing your product near the checkout line at a store could be a good idea for this product. That that's will you often find candy and gum at the front of the of a store. Most convenience products have low prices. This means that cost and discounting, discounting, discounting are major deciding factors when considering a purchase. I won't. I won't switch my toilet paper brand today a few cents. Very good, perfect. So, so this is the second category, right? Marketing convenience goods. So to promote a convenience good, remember that most people uh, most people impose by these products. So these are different because are not the ones that you are looking for, right? So let me see. No, I don't see any words. Placing your products near the checkout line at a store could be a good idea for this product. And that is true, right? So if you place these products there in the, in the cashier, everybody will be looking for that one. I mean... I believe that almost nobody goes to the supermarket and they say, I need a chocolate and I, I need gums. So yeah. when you yeah. when you are uh, paying for the products there in the cashier, you see all these products and you say, oh, there is chocolate there. I want a chocolate, right? It's this is the strategy, teacher. Exactly. That is a market strategy. So you don't need that one. It's like, uh, it's like when you go to Dollar City, right? You want to buy one thing, but you buy a lot of things that you don't need, right? It's like, oh my goodness, look at this and this and this. That happens. Uh, there are strategies for that, right? And it's very funny because, I mean, we go to buy one thing, but you you walk all. All the dollar here, right? All the place looking for something that you don't know <laughs> that exists. So it's very interesting. Okay, uh, check out. What is check out? Caja registradora. Very good. That is it. And then it says that's why you'll often find candy and gum at the front of the store. Most convenience products have low prices. This means. The cost and discounting aren't major deciding factors when considering a purchase. I won't switch my toilet paper brand just to save a few cents. And that's what we were discussing, right? I mean, uh, Scott is not the cheapest one, but he's the most popular, right? So, but these uh, products are, I mean, the prices are not that high. Let me see if I can find a word here. Candy, what is candy? Very good. What is switch? It's something like a change. Like a change. Switch is to change. Very good. Perfect. Do you have any questions here? It's clear. Very good. Perfect. So let's go to the second category. Um, shopping goods. Uh, who wants to read this one? Anybody? I can try. Go ahead. Uh, two, shopping goods are products shopper the typical spend more time uh, searching and comparing before they buy. Unlike convenience goods, these are readily, readily impulse purchase. 
Shopping goods can be affordable items like clothes and home decor. For example, if you have an, a, an event coming up and you want to get a nice pair of shoes, this doesn't fall under impulse purchase. Instead, you all, you all want to try it on. Consider whether, whether the price well, is, is worth it and even get input from your loved ones. Perfect, very good. So this is the second category, shopping goods. So shopping goods are products shoppers typically spend more time researching and comparing before they buy. Unlike convenience goods, these are a rarely impulse purchases. Okay, what is spend? Gastar. 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 Okay, so when it's about time, it's going to be around uh, about pasar tiempo, right? So in this case, it's pasar tiempo. Uh, researching, what is researching? Búsqueda. Very good, it's like investigate. So for this product, you really investigate, right? Uh, and then uh, it says they are not impulse purchases. And then the second part says shopping goods can be affordable items like clothes and home decor. What is affordable? Accessible. Very good. Something that you can pay for, right? Uh, you know what is clothes? Uh, home decor. What is home decor? Decorar la casa. Very good. So things for your house. For example, if you have an event coming up and you want to get a nice pair of shoes, this doesn't fall under impulse purchases. Instead, you'll want to try it out. Consider whether the price is worth it and even get input from your loved ones. Interesting part. So let's see. Uh, coming up, what is coming up? An event coming up. Se acerca, algo que se acerca. Very se good. Acerca. <laughs> nice. Uh, and then the other one says, um, instead. De hecho, cambio. Very good. Instead, it's like a change. You want to try it on. What is to try it on? Sería como probar. probar. Very good. So that is it. And consider whether the price is worth it. What is whether? Okay, whether is a synonym of if. Como cuando decimos, mm. si esto pasa, esto otro. So, ese si is whether. Whether is a synonym of if. Okay? And then it says worth it. What is worth it? Mm, lo vale. Very good. So, that is it. So... Uh, you are checking about the price and the value, right? So you are comparing both. This is the price, but is the real value? I mean, is, is it nice enough? And then it says, even get input from your loved one. Even. Vamos a ver toda la oración. And even get input from your loved ones. ¿Qué entendemos en esa oración? Get hmm? So it's like it's like this. Y aún, o sea que no solo se ve si el precio en verdad vale la pena, sino que también aún dice uh, se busca un feedback, se busca una 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 opinión de sus seres queridos. Something like that. So. 
because this product is like like buying a shirt, right? Or buying shoes or buying a car, for example. I mean, uh, it's something that you don't buy every day. So you need to to think about how much you are going to spend. Uh, that is true. I mean, when you want to buy, for example, shoes, uh, you pick your your brother or sister or your wife or your husband to get an opinion, right? Is this good? Do you like it? Do you believe that they are nice? Uh, so that happens. So these are shopping goods. All these goods are like that. Very good. Do you have any questions here? No, for me, no. Okay. Perfect. So let's move to the next part. Who wants to read this one? <clears throat> Uh, shopping shopping mm -hmm. goods can also be uh, one of purchase with a uh, higher economic impact. These are higher in goods like cars and houses since it's an expensive and important purchase you'll spend a good amount of time deliberating on on it. For example, when buying a house, you'll attend different open houses and compare the pros and cons of your final selection. Perfect, very good. So. Shopping goods can also be a one of purchase with a higher economic impact. So uh, what is one of purchase? Compra. Yeah, purchase is compra. So a one of purchase is like when you, I mean, it's something that you are going to buy maybe once in the life or twice in the life. Something that is very rare that you are going to buy. Okay, and yeah, higher economic impact. So yeah, you are going to spend a lot of money. So these are the higher end goods like cars and houses. Uh, higher end goods is like uh, bienes para toda la vida or de largo plazo, something like that. Since it's an expensive and important purchase, you spend a good amount of time deliberating on it. Amount. What is amount? Mm, cantidad. Very Costo. good. Uh, cantidad. That would be cantidad. Cantidad. Yeah. So, yes, since this is going to be very expensive, you need to think, right? Analyze. I mean, it can be, it can take a lot of time for you to decide twice. And then it says, for example, when buying a house, you'll attend different open houses and compare the pros and cons on your final selection. What is pros and cons? Very good. That is it. Las pros, lo que tiene a favor y en contra, right? So we decide, we make a list and we analyze what to do, right? So that happens in the shopping goods. Very good. Do you have any questions on this one? It's good to check. Perfect. Let's move on then. Number three, a specialty good. Who wants to read number three? Okay. A special okay. good, a special good is the only product of its kind of the market. This means consumers don't usually feel the need to compare and deliberate as much as they would with shopping products. For example, iPhones are are especially good because of because of Apple's strong brand identity. 
unique features and operating system. This combination creates a perception of product value. Other examples of quality goods include luxury cars, gourmet food brands, and designer clothes. Very good, perfect. So, a specialty good is number three uh, in the classification, right? So, a specialty good is the only product of its kind on the market. So, it's unique. It's very expensive, but it's something very special, right? It's not for every day, right? This means consumers don't usually feel the need to compare and deliberate as much as they would with shopping products. For example, iPhones are specialty good because of Apple's strong brand identity, unique features, and operating system. What is features? Like first. Very good. Nice. This combination. Excuse me, excuse me I can hear feature, features. Characteristics. Characteristics. Thank you. Very good. So this combination creates a perception of product quality. So yes, it's very expensive, you say, but it's a very good product, right? So that's the perception. Other examples of specialty goods include luxury cars, for example, a Ferrari, a Porsche. That is a specialty good. I mean, if you want to buy a car like that, it's not to go to work every day, right? So definitely, it's something different. Gourmet food brands, definitely, right? So if you go to, there are some restaurants where you can pay $100 for one food. Uh, that is not for every day. Right? It's just in special occasions. So, and the other one says designer clothing. Yeah, nowadays there are some clothes that are very expensive. If you go to Simon, for example, you can find uh, shirts of almost $200, which is a lot of money just for one shirt, right? So all of those are specialty goods, things that are not necessary, but you want them because of the quality or because of the brand or because of something, right? Good, good. Do you have any questions on the specialty goods? No, not teacher, but... Uh, for the the last one example, uh, if, if in my birthday day, my family uh, can invite me to a to a a dinner for a pampa one times in a year. Exactly. So that is a very good example. So very nice place. Food is delicious and the environment is very nice. Uh, but it's yes, you can go there every every Friday, right? Yeah. So <laughs> so even sometimes for other food like buffalo wings or any others, it's not possible every every week, right? So every month, maybe every two months. But yeah, some others are like once in a year, uh, because it's too expensive, it's a luxury good. But it's good for you to have that one. So very nice, perfect. Good, good. Any other question or comments? Teacher, I, I don't I don't know, but the, the second paragraph in, in the, the last the last phrase, this combination creates a perception perception of product quality. I don't know, but for example, the, the brand uh, Apple. For me, it's a it's a good brand, a, a good product. A perception, I don't know because the the product is very very good uh, than the other the other brands of cell phones. Uh, yes, the thing is that it says perception in this paragraph because um, in general you need a cell phone just for you to call people, right? And that's it. Many things are included because, of course, it's a very nice product. And the quality, if you compare, actually, if you compare uh, this with Androids, for example, the camera is, is much better, right? From the iPhone, it is better. Uh, but it's a perception because you can have an Android and also you can take pictures. So, right? 
uh, something like that. So that is the point of view here that, I mean, yeah, you can have any kind of self if you want. But if you want something very good on your mind is Apple, is an iPhone. That's the one that it comes to your mind. Thanks, teacher. Very good, perfect. Okay, let's move on then. Teacher. Go ahead. Uh, the difference between the second one and the third one is that shopping goods are more expensive than specialty goods. That is correct, yeah. Specialty goods are actually more expensive. Uh, the other ones are like, uh, are, are things that, how can I say that? Are necessary, but you don't buy every, uh, you don't buy, how can I say, that often. Right. So, for example, on the second category can be a car, a regular car, a Nissan. On the third one is maybe a Lamborghini. So that would might be the difference. Good. Okay, and we have the last one as we were discussing at the beginning. Right. These are the unsolved problems. Um, anybody wants to read? Hello. Oh boy. Hey, I tried. <laughs> dale, hey. Ramiro, dale, dale. No te um, excuse me. No, go ahead, go ahead, Oscar. <laughs> Rock, paper, sister. Ah. <laughs> okay. Voy a decir el primero yo. How such products are goods that people aren't usually excited? excited? To buy it. this product have utility by their their uh, usually not fun purchaser. Adelante, Ramiro, para que no. Okay. Uh, <laughs> a good example of thank you, Oscar. Excuse me. Good example of the unsold goods include fire extinguish, insurance, insurance. And refrigerator, people of uh, often buy unsold a uh, good uh, out of a sense or of fear, danger, or utility. For instance, you will not go online to search for the new and best fire extinguishers. You only buy one due to the fear or potential fire. People also buy unsold goods like refrigerator or toaster because the old one stopped working. Perfect, very good, thank you. So number four are unsold products. So are goods that people are usually excited to buy. These products have utility, but they're usually not fun purchases. And that happens. So uh, let me see if there is any other question here. I don't think so. So uh, yes, these things, you need them. They are necessary, but it's something that you, I mean, you buy it because you need. It's like when, for example, when you buy tires of the cars, right? I mean, it's not, you're not excited to buy tires to spend $200, $300 in tires. You know, tires like Janta de Buscar, so it's, it's something that you have to, but it's, I mean, you say, oh my goodness, I have to, to buy the tires to the car. So that happens sometimes. Good examples of unsub goods include fire extinguishers. What is fire extinguishers? Extinguidores de fuego. Exactly. Those ones, is a, this is a very good example. I mean, what it says after that one is very true. Nobody goes online to look for fire extinguishers, right? To see the bigger, the most expensive. No, it's something that you might need. Insurance is another thing, right? It's expense that maybe you don't see that necessary, but it could be a good idea to have. Refrigerators, mm, well, on that one, I disagree, you know. I really like to go and buy a refrigerator to see the space and to see the 
the colors, things like that. Right? <laughs> That's for me. I don't know for you, but for me, actually, I, I want to buy one, a new one right now. So I'm going to go and look for something. People often buy and sell goods out of a sense of fear. What is sense of fear? Sentir miedo, sensación de miedo. Exactly. So insurance or fire extinguishers are like that. When you are afraid of something. To uh, danger or utility. For instance, you wouldn't go online to search for the new and best fire extinguisher. You only buy one due to the fear of a potential fire. People also buy and sell goods like refrigerators or toasters because the old ones stopped working. Toaster, where is a toaster? Tostadora. Very good. All these, those are pretty good, actually, I, I really like it. Perfect. Do you have any questions here? Okay. Uh, nice. Let's go move on. Well. Okay, so but why the classification of consumer products is important? Who wants to read this one? Me, teacher. Okay. Okay. Why the classification of consumer products is important? Customers' awareness. Product classifications can help you better understand what motivates people to make a purchase. That information helps your team make more effective, effective decision for marketing, pricing, sales, distribution. This knowledge can also help your team make decisions that will make, make it easier for customers to find and use your website for online purchases. Very good, perfect. So yes, there is importance in knowing uh, the classification, right? It says why the classification of consumer products is important. Customer awareness, what is awareness? Anybody? Conciencia, no. Ciencia. Very good. Nice. That would be customer awareness is like that. So product classification can help you better understand what motivates people to make a purchase. I mean, these companies, they invest a lot to understand why people buy something. Okay. And that information helps your team make more effective decisions for marketing, pricing, sales, and distribution. This knowledge can also help your team make decisions that make it easier for customers to find and use your website for online purchases. I believe this is clear, right? If you understand why customers buy products, it's going to be easier for you to have them find your products. Teacher, for example, in the United States, the the client is the only only one phone in the pay and the buy a different products not necessary in the buy. Is the consumis consumismo como se dice consumism 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 uh, eh, exageradamente Ah, se sure. puede gastar todo su salario con el teléfono sin, <laughs> sin salir de casa ahí puede estar eh, Amazon en ¿cómo se llama esta otra empresa? Eh, eh, llevando cosas que no necesita eBay ah, eBay eBay yeah. Sí. Yeah. es exagerado como se consume ahí that is true, that is true. actually, ya yeah. Now online you can you can find a lot of things, right? A lot of products and services. And you are right. I mean, if, if 
I mean, you can spend all your money in this kind of thing. So. In my family, uh, buy the the garbage, basurero. Mm -hmm. Only only pass the hand encima de la de la tapa. Solo pasa la mano y se levanta. Oh, why? <laughs> Exactly. So that is marketing, right? In oh, I mean, for people to buy this product, uh, there is a lot of research, on that, a lot of investigation, a lot of analyzing. So they decide to launch the product, and that is successful, as you say. It's not necessary. You can have any regular trash can. But if it's not that expensive, I just say, yeah, I'm going to buy it. This is amazing. This is a good product. You can see the LED, the TV, and refrigerator. It's not necessary. It's so in, a, in, a, in la pantalla, la pantalla está en la puerta de, de la refrigeradora. Exactly. That is true. It's there, right? It's there. And if you have the money, you can buy whatever you want. I mean, imagine, imagine what would you buy if you had, for example, one million dollars. So, yeah, probably at the beginning you will buy a nice house. You win the lottery. Yeah, I mind something like that one. Okay, uh, maybe yes. At the beginning, you believe I'm going to buy a, a business and run something, but probably you are going to buy a nice motorbike or a nice car, something luxury, something that is not necessary. But since you have the money, you can do that. So that happens a lot. Perfect. Do you have any questions on this one? No, teacher. It's clear, teacher. No, for me. Good, good. Let's move on then. Industry awareness. Who wants to read this one? Industry awareness. Collect products classification help business avoid unnecessary risk. They also impact piercing and piercing. And pricing. Distribution. pricing and distribution. Very good. So awareness, you know what is that one, right? Correct product classification help businesses avoid what is avoid? Evitar. Very good. Avoid unnecessary risks. They also impact pricing and distribution. So if the industry is conscious about the products that they are going to launch, the distribution of things and that one, uh, it's going to be much better, right? Because they know that the products are going to work, that the people are going to buy the products. Definitely, that is a good one. Uh, do you have any questions on this one? This is a short one. Teacher, for, for me, I, I, I don't uh, understand but, uh, 100%, but uh, for example, uh, for what is, is the example about it, the industry awareness? Yeah, of course. Imagine that a company is researching, is researching about, I don't know, a flying car. Uh, this is something that maybe everybody wants to have, right? A flying car. Uh, but they uh, start researching, they check that it's dangerous because pe maybe people are going to crash in the air. They are not going to put some gasoline, but maybe the cars are going to fall down. Those are risks that the company have. So they have to analyze so they understand if it's possible, if it's feasible. That is the word for that one. If it's feasible to launch the product. So maybe the idea is a good idea, but maybe it's not good product to, to go on the market. So they decide we are not going to risk. We are going to uh, avoid launching the product. 
Okay, teacher. Thanks. You're welcome. Any other question? Risk is como riesgo. That is it. Risk is like riesgo. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Any other question? Okay, who wants to read the next one? Okay, go ahead, Juan. Sorry. A competitive awareness, product classification, how so your business meet and exceed the standards set by competitors. They can help make you a more effective brand in your niche and a niche and industry. Understanding how product might be classified can also help you find ways to make it stand out. It can also help you with the value of, of continued innovation, research, and development. Very good, perfect. So the other one is competitive awareness. Product classification helps your business meet and exceed the standards set by competitors. That is true, right? Uh, when you have a product that is similar or the same than the other one, you want to offer better quality and lower pricing, right? But of course you want to get some profits. So that is true, definitely. Uh, and then it says they can help make you a more effective brand in your niche and industry. So definitely that is so true. And then it says understanding how your product might be classified can also help you find ways to make it stand out. What is uh, make it stand out? Podría ser como promoverlo. Perfect, that is it. Yeah, to make it relevant for people. It can also help you weigh the value of continued innovation, research, and development. What is weigh? Peso. Very good, peso. So, uh, it helps you to weigh the value of continued innovation. What is continued innovation? Innovation continua. Very good. That is it. Research <clears throat> and development. So this is a very important one actually for free market. Right? Okay. Uh, uh, any question that you might have here? Teacher, is there not another um, situation or the obsolescence? El consumismo, bueno, hay unas cosas que se cambian porque sí, así como dijo usted lo, la, lo de la impresora, que la impresora de repente hay que comprar otra vez el programa o mandarla a, re, ¿cómo se llama? a, a reprogramar para que obtenga cierta cantidad de impresiones. Pero hay otras cosas que la gente las consume porque... Salió el iPhone 14 y hay que comprarlo. No es porque esté dañado el anterior, sino que porque le meten en la cabeza de que ese otro es mejor. Pero ese es como, a veces no son innovaciones continuas, sino que es un nuevo producto, solo el marketing. A veces solo son las cosas del pasado, las mejoran y, y se las venden para que cons se consuman. That is actually true. I mean, uh, and yes, right. you are right. With Apple, that happens a lot, right? They, they launch a product. I mean, and it's just a few things that are different. I mean, the rest is the same. The same, yes. So yes, it's a, it's something that happens definitely. So in the world of today, and uh, we need to be aware of that. Nice. Uh, do you have any question on this slide? No, teacher. Good. Okay, so this is it for this part. And we're going to start with the book. 
we haven't checked the book yet. So this is the book. I believe that you downloaded the book. If you want to print it, you can print it. Or if you want to, uh, to just uh, look at here when whenever we are using that stuff. Uh, we have a homework for Friday. Okay, for everybody, what you are going to do is to bring. Pero voy a hacer el rato en sí, mire, espérate, le dije, no solo hagas el rato, porque quién sabe si lo van a ver. Okay, that is a commercial. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, the uh, homework for Friday is this. You need to, to speak about one product, a product that you believe is amazing, is nice. It, it can be something new, something old, or something that it doesn't exist and might exist in the future. So, uh, tell us why do you believe the product is amazing and what is the product about? It can be any kind of product. It can be a service or a product. Okay. It can be something that you use. Teacher, with. teacher, sorry, I didn't understand. Ah, uh, yeah. For Friday, what you're going to do is to, to speak to the class and you are going to show a product, any product, uh, but not only a product, something that is special, something that is amazing. Okay, and it can be a real product or a product that you believe might be very good. It can be uh, something that you use or something that it doesn't exist and is in, in progress uh, either. Teacher, I have a question about this. Okay. Um, we can use a flashcard, for example, for uh, offering my product. Definitely. So you can bring a presentation, you can bring a picture, or you just can speak whatever you want. I know that you are very busy. So if you only speak, it's fine. Uh, or you can only show a picture and that is also fine. Okay. Okay. And another one. <laughs> uh, okay. But in Spanish, <laughs> because okay. for... Uh, lo que sucede que yo no me pude... <clears throat> No me, no me pude unir a lo de activar en la plataforma porque no me agarra eh, el correo, no sé por qué, pero no puedo activarlo. Okay. Entonces no sé cómo, cómo hacer ahí. Uh, ajá, so let me check ahí, right? Let me tell you. Ok, uh, the email that I see here that is linked to the... Uh, to the platform is um, lb18006 at us.edu.sv. Uh, ese es el correo que tiene. Posiblemente oh. sea por eso. Ah, es que sí, la cosa es que como tengo varios correos, está como que confundida que no sé cuál, pero la solicitud, por ejemplo, de esta, la miren, la recibí en el privado. Eh, que mm. es la cuenta de los colegios privados. Ajá. Ajá, no, Ajá, por eso quizás es que no. Bueno, voy a intentar con la otra, Lick, si no voy a, a ver cómo hago. Perfecto, si trate con esa, si, me, si no lo puede activar mañana, me escribe, me puede escribir directamente y lo vamos a reportar para que le ayude. Vale, ok, thank you so much. Very good, perfect. Um, any other question before we continue about the homework? about many other things. Okay. Uh, if it's possible, si fuera posible, todos los viernes vamos a hacer alguna actividad así, okay? So, for you to practice and speak. That is the most important. Teacher, teacher, uh -huh. uh, the, the product uh, that I showed uh, on, on Friday, what facial uh, or, or what characteristics that product uh, must you show? Show. You can show any characteristics, any features that you believe it has to have. Yeah. For example, you know, uh, in one class, somebody present me a a a watch okay. that shows you here the screen of the cell phone, and you can navigate here only with the light. That was really good. Uh, and he was telling the feature that you can watch movies, you can 
I mean, you can describe all the all the product. Ah, okay, okay. Thank you, teacher. Very good. Very good. What that, what time uh, the presentation for each? Uh, it's for not big. It's not big. I mean, you can speak. I mean, three, four, five minutes. That would be. Oh, okay. Very good, teacher. Good. Perfect. Teacher, nice. individuality. That is individual. Yeah. Good, perfect. Okay, any other question? Huh? Okay, so let's move on with the book. So we are in unit one, of course, and it says I will be able to describe details about the stages of the product life cycle. Of course, you know something about that one because we discussed that later on. So uh, it says, number one, let's start. Have you ever participated in the development of a new product? Ah, this is a good question. Have you ever participated in the development of a new product? Anybody here in the class or never? Okay. The other one says, what is a product? Oh, I'm sorry, somebody. Okay, uh, only a question about this, uh, this unit mm -hmm. is uh, for the, the reference. Uh, we take this page for reference um, any of the state of the product. This is for the product life cycle, yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so the second question says, what is a product or service that your company has recently introduced to the market? Uh, for example, in my in my office, uh, created a, a place with a different offer for um, um, uh, food, food, uh, food uh, different and special with a chef, a uh, new chef, uh, for uh, uh, give the the change, the change, change uh, in the in the market. Okay, very interesting. So, uh, and what was the name of the product? Uh, La Placita, inside uh, the La Plaza Futura, he have uh, uh, the eight uh, or nine places, uh, different uh, offers for foods and uh, foods and um, other other uh, uh, ice creams and another another uh, uh, foods different. Okay. Very interesting. So that sounds very nice. And you see that there is a strategy, right? Because they launched the product but all with a chat. So not only the product. So that would be good, good. So, and uh, let's go to the exercise number two then. Look at the definitions of the stages of the product life cycle. Match them to the appropriate phase and then check the answers. We're going to read and then we're going to do the exercise. Or no, let's do something. I'm going to give you a few minutes for you to read. If there is a new vocabulary, uh, try to look for that one in the dictionary or Google, but please try to tell me that in English, okay? So let's see how it goes. And then we're going to match A with maturity or B with decline, whatever you believe is the answer, okay? So I'm going to give you a few minutes for that one. For you to do that.
Okay, did you finish or do you need more time? Please, two, two minutes more. Of course. Right. Yes, yes, please. I finish. I wait. Of course. Okay, my friends, let's check it out. So who wants to read the first one and do that? Okay, I start. Okay. First the one is the one. Is... No, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Please. The product is no longer attractive for many customers. And stop, and the producer start marking the situation about the spontaneous the product buying out competitors or saying in their another product. It's a number um or it's a decline. Decline. Very good. That would be okay. Nice. So the product is no longer attractive for many customers. So stop. 
and the producer start making decisions about discontinuing the product, buying out competitors or selling it to another producer. So definitely that is the plan, okay? Uh, who wants to read the next one? Okay, go ahead. Okay. At this stage, a new product is brought into the market. The demand of the product might be low and marketing efforts try to develop branding, quality and awareness of the new product to innovator. Our marketing introduction, I think. Market introduction, everybody agrees? Marketing introduction? Very good. Yeah. So, yeah, it says at this yes. stage, perfect. At this stage, a new product is brought into the market. The demand of the product might be low, and marketing efforts try to develop branding, query, and awareness of new product to innovate. Good, perfect. Who wants to do the next one? Me, teacher. Okay, go ahead. The growth is sale disgrace because no, there are many competi competi competitor, I'm sorry, competitors. Competitors. Uh, Competitor maker uh, saturation, of course. The marketing uh, effort work to di to differentiate the product and price may be lower than in the previous stage. In, I think that is maturity. Maturity. Everybody agrees? Yes, maturity. I, I agree, teacher. Uh, one point in the next uh, oral evaluation teacher. Okay. One, one point for the exams. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. All right, that sounds a plan. That sounds better. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, the growth in sales decreases because there are many competitors, market saturation occurs. The marketing efforts work to differentiate the product and prices might be lower than in the previous states. Very good, perfect. Who wants to read the last one? Me, teacher. Okay. Uh, the new product register an increase in, in demand, demand because more customers accept it. Uh, the sales start to grow and there is uh, there is little competition. The last one, teacher, uh, growth. Growth, very good. So yeah, the new product registers an increase in demand because more customers accept it. The sales start to grow and there is little competition. Very nice, very good, perfect. Uh, do you have any questions in this panel? Let's check some vocabulary. Discontinuing. What is that? Do you remember? On the first paragraph. Como un producto que ya no está como en tienda, descontinuado. Very good. That is it. Uh, let's see. Uh, on the second one, part B. Proud. What is proud? First line. Eh, lleva traer el, el producto. Very good. Proud. That is the pass of bring. Uh, low. What is low? Bajo. Bajo. Very good. Nice. Okay. Uh, let's see on the next one. Okay, uh, I don't see any work here. And in the last one. No, I didn't find any. Do you have any questions here? No, for me. No, for me, too. Okay. Mm, okay, conversation. 
this is something we're going to do tomorrow because we need to practice everybody and uh, we need more time and it's almost time to go to bed. So uh, whenever we have the time, we're going to do free practice, okay? So this is free practice. Uh, a volunteer. Excuse me, teacher, I don't understand. Uh, yeah, I need a volunteer for us to speak a little bit. It's just free practice. Okay. So who is the volunteer? Anybody. I know that you want. Okay, I am Nelson. Okay. With Gina. Gina. Okay, ready? Have you tried the new green tortillas? What's up? Sounds like tortilla. Uh, they are actually corn con, con chips with the avocado flour. Mm, they sounds delicious. Where did you get them? They are not everywhere yet only low price market sell them at the moment. Let's buy some. I want to try green tortillas. Okay, you made the conversation. That was good. <laughs> I didn't expect that one, but that was a good one. <laughs> Actually, the exercise is like this. Okay, let's do it like this. Um, because the conversation is going to be for tomorrow, but the practice was very good. Okay, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to choose a person. Let's see. Sandra Gomez. Okay. So the, the free practice is like this. Hello, Sandra. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. You? I'm very well, very tired, but I'm very happy. Okay. It's cool. Okay. Uh, what time do you usually have dinner? Um, 7 p.m. Mm, 7 is a nice thing. Yes. Do you always cook? Yes, yes. Very good. And what's your favorite food? My favorite food is Chinese food, um, pizza, and beans, um, and <laughs> everything food. Okay. <laughs> That's good. That sounds very nice. Yes. I have a... You? Uh, and you? What is your favorite food? Ah, oh, well, my favorite food is meat, and I really like also seafood. Uh, you know, shrimps, oh, yeah. fish, and things like that. One. So, wow, yeah, yeah. those are it's those good. are the ones. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what is what is the best dish that you can cook? Uh, I'm not saying Okay, dish? what is dish? This? Uh, anybody knows what is dish? Oh, oh. plato. Ah, okay. uh -huh. Plato. Okay. Platillo. 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 Yeah. Yes, yes, platillo. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> perdón. What is what is that? What is that? Pregunta. Perdón. Ah, uh, yeah. You can say repeat, please, and I will repeat. Of course. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So, uh, what is the best dish that you can cook? Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Everything good. <laughs> oh my goodness! I I I I love. Your turn. I I my work is a big part of. Yo cocino. Yo yo cocino. Yo. That's yo your hago job. Comida para vender. <laughs> okay. Oh I, my goodness! I work is a restaurant and I help uh um and kitchen uh. I have a, a personal a, uh, a cocina. Yo, yo ayudo al personal. Okay, mine. We didn't cocina. know that one. I don't know if you knew that one. My my, my 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 dish my dish favorite uh is uh, my best dish is beef um 
Carne asada carbón. Ah, uh, is grilled okay. meat. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah. and uh, so it's, you said that you sell. Oh, definitely, that is delicious. I'm hungry already. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, you, you, say... you cook? You you do cook? Usted cocina? I cook. I really like to cook. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I really okay. enjoy what that. What is your favorite one. dish? Very um, good. Let me think. Um, I have lots of things that I like to cook, but sometimes it's difficult to cook. So, for example. I can cook ramen. That is uh, Japanese soup. Oh, <laughs> easy. That is that is it's not that easy. It's difficult, but it's very nice. Also, I like to cook sushi. Uh, grilled oh. meat. You know, wow. grilled meat is something that I really like to cook. Um, I can cook a lot of things. Blue ribbon. I really like that one. Um, uh, meat. Okay. Me, uh, meat love. That's the one. Meat love. I really like that one as well. So okay. you can see that I like a lot of meat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, qué bueno, muy bien. <laughs> so yes. you were you were saying that you uh, sell food. So do you have a restaurant, right? Um. Yes. Oh, my where restaurant is your restaurant? Is, my restaurant is the beef. Um. Um. Como comida típica salvadoreña, ¿cómo lo puedo hacer? Uh, typical food. Typical food, ok, ok. Ok, and uh, where? Uh, uh, y carne asada. That's my thing. I will go for that one. Como más principal. Yes. Okay. And <laughs> where is your restaurant? Uh, my restaurant is in hotel y restaurante. Cabaña y mirador Tricón. Ah, in the cabins. Uh, where exactly yes. you say? In Morazán, Arambala, Morazán. Arambala, okay. Yes. I'm I'm going to look for that one, you know, and maybe I'm going to be there. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and we're okay. going to have food, but in English. Oh. <laughs> Arambala, so I'm going to look for that one, definitely. Arambala, yes. Uh, um, I... Síganos en redes. Ok. <laughs> Promotion. <Instagram. Yes>. Ah. <laughs> Caballero Facebook page. <laughs> Facebook page. Instagram page. <laughs> Facebook page. Nice. That's good. Yeah, definitely. Yes. <laughs> Very good. Perfect. Thank you for okay. that, Sandra. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. <laughs> Perfect. Ok, my friends. You see, we finished the class already. Very nice. It was a very good class. I really liked it. So we're going to check the attendance and then we're going to go to bed. So Aida Isabel Lopez Bonilla. I'm here. Good. Ana Veronica Hernandez Rodriguez. Here I am. Good. Blanca Isabel Tunaca de Rodriguez. Present. Good. Eric Enrique Reyes Martinez. Ernesto José Andrade Medina. Here, teacher. Good. Ingrid Paola Hernández Tenorio. Here, teacher. Good. Jennifer Esmeralda Amaya Arias. Present. Good. Jonathan Ariel Figueroa Rivera. Present. Good. José Alfredo Hueso López. Present, teacher. Good. Juan Roberto Velázquez Romero. Here, teacher. Good. Carla Alejandra Castillo. Here, teacher. Good. María Julia Ramos Olivar. Present. Good. Mónica Wendy Ábalos Girón. Present. Good. Oscar Mauricio Rivera González. Present. Good. Oscar René Molina Calidoni. Here I am. Good. <laughs> Oseas Figueroa Cisneros. Present teacher. Good. Ramiro Rafael Aguilar Díaz. Present teacher. Good. Roberto Carlos Avides Rivera. I'm here. 
Good. Sandra Janira Gomez Romero. Present. Good. Nice. Uh, Silvia Patricia Aceituno Mendez. Ah, okay. And Victor Eduardo Reyes Navarrete. I'm here, Jeff. Perfect. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure to be here with you tonight. Have a very good night. Rest very well. See you tomorrow and dream in English. See you tomorrow, teacher. See you. See you. See you, See you tomorrow. Good, good night. night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Hello. Hello, Bill. how are you? Uh, do you have any questions or anything that I can help you? Hello.